Hey guys, I'm Kevin Lewis from Imaginary Effects. I'm a creative art director by day, an award-winning effects makeup artist, and cosplayer by night. So a lot of people know me for a lot of my characters, such as Hawkeye from The Avengers, uh, I would say Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead, I even do Captain Jack Sparrow, The Grinch, um, you know, I would say even The Night King from Game of Thrones. So I've also been featured both nationally and locally on, say, Marvel, DC, Instagram, Nerdist, and even Cosplay Culture Magazine. Also through Dallas Observer, local TV, I also do the Think Geek grand openings. I'm also a guest and judge at a lot of the Comic Cons. The one thing that I love about cosplay is, is that, you know, it's really a good creative outlet for me. So during the day, I do work as a creative art director. So unlike the commercial art that I do, with the cosplay, it gives me an opportunity to explore a different creative outlet through the characters that I bring to life. So the great thing about cosplay is, is there's also a whole community that's tied to it. Um, I would say, you know, there's also a lot of creativity that goes into those communities and there's also a lot of positive support, as well as opportunities even outside of the conventions, such as working with nonprofit organizations and children's charities and things like that. So as a kid, I had a love for horror movies and Halloween. So the one thing was, is I was fascinated with, say, the Universal Movie Monsters, and not only just those characters, but also like how do they bring those characters to life? Especially back then, there was no CG. So when I was around nine years old, I actually taught my mom into buying me my very first effects makeup kit. Little did I know at that time, that kit was actually created by the legend and award-winning makeup artist from Hollywood, Dick Smith. So if you don't know Dick Smith, he's been responsible for everything from The Exorcist, The Godfather, you name it, all kinds of movies back in the day. And I would say he's definitely been an influence on me as an artist and as a cosplayer. And I would say even a lot of the cosplays that I do, since I do utilize effects makeup in a lot of my cosplays. So when I became an adult, I would start entering Halloween contests, either at work parties or other types of Halloween events, and I would actually start winning Halloween costume contests. So when I first started my job at a creative agency, the very first day on the job was actually on Halloween, and they told me, hey, we're having a Halloween party, you should actually dress up for the party. Little did they know what they were getting themselves into, considering that uh, one of the characters I do is a character called Sketchy the Clown. So who is Sketchy? He's actually a clown from hell. And actually it utilizes prosthetic makeup. I even have a whole act and personality and voice that goes with it. Hey everybody, I'm Sketchy the Clown. So I really freaked a lot of people out because when they would ask me, no really, who are you? They wouldn't even know anyway because it was my first day on the job. And keep in mind that I didn't break character the whole day. So when I first heard about these Comic Cons, I had friends that would tell me, yeah, you should go check it out because people would dress up in costume and all this considering they knew that I did Halloween costumes. And I thought, I don't know if that's for me. So finally, I decided to go to my very first con. It was a sci-fi convention in Dallas about, I would say, six years ago. And instead of just going as a spectator, I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go as Darth Maul from Star Wars. So I made my own costume. I did, I created the costume, I did the makeup, the whole nine yards, and I showed up at the con, and I gotta say, once I did, it was a completely different experience for me. Uh, what was really cool is the fact that I would have like little kids that would come up and you know really be in amazement thinking that I was really the real character and uh, what was really neat is how people would not only take pictures with me, but of me. I even got the opportunity to meet Sam Witwer, which is the voice of Darth Maul in The Clone Wars. So he actually saw me in line, he jumped out from around the table and said, hey, can I take a photo with you? And that was really cool. So remember, this was the very first con that I've ever been to, and after that, I was hooked. Then I started winning contests at the conventions, at other events, and even online. So after I started getting a little bit of recognition for my costumes and cosplays, uh, then I would start to be asked uh, from a lot of the conventions to actually be a judge myself for those contests.
also, I've had the opportunity to actually be a guest at the convention too as a cosplayer. So I've also had some great opportunities even outside of the conventions with my cosplays. So after I debuted the Night King costume from Game of Thrones, I actually got a lot of recognition for that and I was actually contacted by a studio in LA uh, that produces a show for Nerdist. So that show is called The Space Program, which features Kyle Hill as the host. So if you don't know who Kyle Hill is, he actually does a show called Because Science, which is also on Nerdist. But the thing that was interesting about the space program is that it was a uh, it was a show that they wanted to do kind of like as a mini series, and they built this really elaborate spaceship inside of a sound studio, and with a lot of green screen stuff and all that. And as part of that show, he would fly around to these different worlds and uh, I would say fantasy lands and things like that. And part of that was Westeros, which is in Game of Thrones. So the one thing about Kyle Hill and his shows is that he actually likes to explain uh, fantasy and sci-fi uh, themes and worlds through science and how that could be possible. So they offered to fly me out to LA to shoot the show with them. And I was thinking to myself, is somebody just playing a prank on me and jerking my chain here? But sure enough, it was the real deal. And we actually negotiated a contract and we made it happen. That's a White Walker. You mean one of the undead abominations created by the children of the forest to protect themselves against the ravages of the first men? Why would you let me let him in here? That seems like a huge mistake. Debate stasis beam. <sighs> we have a stasis beam? Yeah, look around, it's a totally futuristic spaceship. We have all kinds of bone beams. So another opportunity that I had as a Night King is I actually got to meet Kristen Nairn, who's actually a touring DJ, and he plays Hodor on Game of Thrones. So Frank from Yogo Me actually was able to make an arrangement to where he was able to pull me back behind the backstage and actually meet him, and we got a chance to hang out. And he was just like a super cool, nice guy. Um, definitely had some funny questions and he had some funny answers. So one of the questions that I had for him when we were backstage is I said, would you rather be a DJ and do music or would you rather act? His answer was pretty funny. He said, why choose? So when we got there at the club, uh, you know, I walked in as the Night King. There were also some other Game of Thrones uh, cosplayers there with us, but I just got to say people like reacted. It was crazy. I mean, they came up and everybody was wanting to do selfies with me. And, uh, you know, I definitely got a lot of attention, I would say, especially since a lot of people that were there were there to see Hodor as a DJ. So there were a lot of Game of Thrones uh, fans. And I even got a chance to meet Richard Brake. So if you don't know who Richard Brake is, he's actually the uh, actor that plays the Night King. And I actually got to meet him as the Night King. And uh, a funny story about that is when I got a chance to, uh, to meet him, it was at uh, one of the conventions called um, Texas Frightmare Weekend. And again, you know, he, he saw me, he jumped out from around his table and he was like, hey, can I take a photo with you? And uh, it was pretty cool because we actually had a chance to, to, to talk a little bit. And uh, he told me some really funny stories about when he was shooting the show, uh, Game of Thrones, and uh, probably some stuff I probably wouldn't want to mention on camera right now. 
So in addition, I also do guest appearances, uh, MC, and host various events, as well as I help run a party and event business with my wife called Unwrap the Magic. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, I work with a lot of nonprofit and charity organizations, and uh, I show up as characters and visit a lot of the, uh, the sick and I would say underprivileged children. So one of the organizations that I work with is Heroic Inner Kids, and they are a nonprofit organization. And what they do is they uh, utilize cosplay and cosplayers to, uh, to give back and help uh, those type of children. So during the holidays, my wife and I, we do uh, the Grinch and Cindy Lou, and it's our way of giving back during the holidays. And we do everything from toy drives to visiting, uh, kids at some of the hospitals such as Scottish Rite Hospital and whatever else we can do to kind of give back during the holidays. So be sure to check out some more of my characters, uh, I would say featured events and other future projects at ImaginaryEffects.com and Instagram and Facebook at ImaginaryEffects.